The digital patient can be translated to the clinic by helping the clinician, myself, provide better care for the patient using uh, complex clinical information uh, fed into a personalized uh, computational model in an attempt to simplify the decision-making process, um, particularly by identifying clinical risks and predicting clinical progression and suggesting perhaps bespoke care interventions that take into account the uh, individual circumstances of the patient um, with the aim of actually improving clinical outcomes. I envisage first of all that you would perhaps need to employ um, imaging, biochemical and biophysical data, computational modeling data from patients which you then incorporate into a finite element model which then enables you to develop predictive tools which again you could then uh, personalize using individual data with a view to actually being able to tell a patient who needs care um, what the potential options are for them um, uh, and what interventions would best help them in a way which sometimes is not always feasible by um, just manual techniques of the clinician having to make decisions based on um, lots and lots of laboratory data and lots and lots of clinical information which is not synthesized in any systematic way. So I would hope that it would help particularly with some of the more complex decisions um, that patients need to make um, by standardizing it in a form and simplifying the process. Uh, my sphere of practice really, my digital patient would be the, the digital mother um, the digital child or the digital non-pregnant woman and I would envisage that a digital patient would be very helpful in various clinical scenarios that I have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and some of these scenarios are relatively complex and have huge disease burdens and sometimes I have difficulties and challenges trying to provide the best care for the patient. Some examples for example with regards to the digital mother, mother would be um, uh, managing preterm birth, for example. As you know, premature birth is, is a principal cause of perinatal fetal loss. And so if I could predict more accurately women who would ultimately deliver prematurely, uh, then I would be m much better able to identify them uh, and prevent them and treat, manage those that ultimately do deliver prematurely. And I suspect that uh, the digital patient would provide me some real exciting opportunities to model premature birth in a way that I couldn't do um, with currently existing technologies. Another uh, situation would be uh, managing the uh, trauma that is associated with childbirth, which uh, you may know affects as many as 30 to 50 percent of women who deliver children have um, pelvic floor damage and I would wish that there was a means perhaps enabled by the digital child that would enable me to predict women who might um, be exposed to birth trauma and would enable me to actually um, prevent it and I suspect that this would be feasible by uh, virtue of some of the new technologies that are available um, on the basis of which we can get very good imaging data, uh, very good uh, biomechanical data that will be fed into a personalized model of care uh, that hopefully mitigates against that. And in the non-pregnant scenarios as well, there are um, gynecological cancers. I suspect that we can bring the technologies and the innovations associated with uh, the digital woman to bear on uh, prevent screening and uh, the prevention and diagnosis of uh, gynecological cancers and also perhaps even predicting uh, responses to the various uh, therapeutic regimens um, that may be available for the respective problems that women would have. And moving on to the child, uh, which is also very important because we, it is obvious that what happens to the child is to a large extent dependent on the, uh, the child's intrauterine environment. So we really can't separate the digital child from the digital mother. And preterm 
birth again is has a lot of toll on on the on the child and so we can again use lots and lots of very good um, and, and high quality imaging data in the immediate postnatal period to predict such problems as uh, neurological handicap in children which um, is contributed to significantly by premature birth so uh, again the digital child would be a project which would f um, help us clinicians, perinatologists and pediatricians um, predict the level of risk that um, children are exposed to as a result of birth trauma and also perhaps also um, identify interventions that will mitigate those risks um, as well as prevent some of them where this is feasible. I envisage um, a significant number of clinical barriers that will need to be overcome for this dream to become reality. I think the key clinical barrier is the barrier of the inadequacy of good quality clinical information um, which will need to be fed into the computational modeling and the assistive or predictive tools um, within the digital patient. So that will be a big barrier which will need to be overcome by good quality bench, uh, bedside research, translational research to provide the kind of data um, that would improve the ability of the digital child or the, the, the digital patient to um, uh, assist clinical care. Another would be the uh, inadequacy currently of um, funding streams that would actually fund such research because there's not an awareness of the capabilities and the potential of the digital patient to help clinicians look after patients. So there will need to be an improvement in strategic funding uh, themes and sources that will need to be um, uh, tapped to enable development in this respect. There are also issues around the acceptability of this modality of uh, clinical care by patients as well as by clinicians um, because again there's not as much awareness regarding the potential of, of this initiative to actually improve clinical care and there will also be issues of um, um, fund holders actually uh, being willing to pay for the inevitable cost that will be associated with some of these um, decision support tools that will become available towards fulfilling the digital patient initiative. I think these are going to be the main barriers that we are, one needs to confront and deal with. That's um, clearly going to be one of the main drawbacks for uh, patients and service users and service providers is that we certainly do need to guarantee uh, that personal and confidential data is, is securely protected and encrypted in such a way uh, that will give confidence to um, both service users and service providers. Um, so that that will have to be something that needs addressing uh, at a very early stage of the uh, process of evolution towards uh, a digital patient. The, the commercial service providers, I would anticipate, will need to be um, very substantially involved in ensuring that there are mechanisms in place for securing and protecting confidentiality and patient data, uh, both in terms of the imaging um, uh, data that is captured, the laboratory information that is captured, as well as the options for treatment, which uh, some of these decision support tools will enable us to generate. Uh, but I guess that's something that the clinician is conversant with anyway, because current clinical frameworks enable us to ensure um, that we, pr uh, we, we protect personal data and personal clinical information. That's an area where uh, the digital patient could potentially revolutionize care because access to such information at the moment is highly restricted to specific physical environments uh, whereas the digital 
patient potentially will provide us the opportunity for remote access of uh, clinical information in a safe and protected way that also means that we can actually provide uh, clinical care and support uh, electronically rather than necessarily face to face in ways and means that perhaps that would not have been possible. I think the key areas where investment uh, will be required uh, really relate to funding investment in research, good quality research, good quality uh, clinical research that captures the material property that will inform these uh, models. There's also the need to fund uh, projects um, at the interface between the clinical arena and the actual uh, uh, use of these technologies within the clinical setting. Uh, and so clearly that is another area of research that needs uh, a lot of funding inje injection. I think there's also the need for uh, funding to be made available, uh, particularly uh, in respect of um, those diseases and those conditions that have the most socioeconomic, the most impact on, on the quality of life of people and the most uh, impact on, on, on socioeconomics. Uh, and so clearly those diseases with the uh, most severe burdens on society perhaps ought to be strategically focused on um, to improve, to provide tools of um, a care which are not currently available. Um, I also think that the more challenging clinical problems where current existing technologies don't uh, are not able to provide uh, care, where the clinician is struggling the most, are the ones most likely to that, uh, are the ones that we should focus on at this moment in time. Trying to provide innovative techniques uh, that enable the clinician do things that uh, currently uh, we cannot do because of restrictions in information uh, acquisition and restrictions uh, with integrating information to provide um, 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 clinical care pathways and alternatives, as it were. Certainly, uh, with, amongst my peers, I think there is that expectation that this should be the next big thing, if not in, as a whole, but certainly in various uh, as strands of care, uh, colleagues, professional colleagues expect major uh, innovation in, in respect of actually being able to use uh, technological skills to improve clinical care. I actually suspect that this expectation is, is probably even more amongst patients who probably don't understand some of the challenges that are required in delivering um, this, these sorts of tools within you know, during the decision-making process uh, to which they are exposed from time to time. And they certainly expect clinicians to be able to do more. They expect clinicians to be able to make more accurate diagnoses. They expect uh, clinicians to be able to actually uh, provide alternatives for care, which in a way that was not feasible a long time ago. I recall fairly recently a mother bringing me and saying, um, doctor, I'd like to have a baby, uh, and I'd like to have a boy, and I'd like to have a boy that is fair-skinned. Um, and so the expectations are clearly uh, reaching such a level that we need to look for new and innovative tools um, for actually making uh, patient expectations, meeting as many of these expectations uh, as technology will, uh, would allow us concept of the digital patient will actually improve, uh, does solve some of the ethical challenges that we've faced over the years, particularly with regards to obtaining good clinical data that informs subsequent clinical care. There is a lot of information that we cannot get from clinical research experiments on human subjects which uh, digitally we can uh, model with a view to actually improving care. I can think of so many clinical uh, investigations that I wish I could do, but I cannot do because of ethical limitations on what is experimentally possible. Um, and there are, these are some of the areas that I'm excited about, the opportunities which the digital patient can uh, provide because we can model them in a way that is ethically uh, virtually impossible.